For the last few months, Mario Strikers Battle League has taken the internet by storm. Ever since its reveal in the February Nintendo Direct, people have been going nuts. And for many, it was the highlight of that Direct. For us though... Eh. We just never really got into it. We do admit that it probably has a lot to do with the fact that we don't have any nostalgia for the Mario Strikers series. A lot of people are excited that one of their favourite franchises from yesteryear is getting a new entry. And don't get us wrong, that's awesome. We're definitely not here to tell people what to be excited about. But what is there for newcomers like us? We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves though. So let's just take a step back, shall we? Before we do that, don't forget to hit that like button all the way down the fairway. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button as well and give it a red card. Red! Oh! So I guess the real reason why none of these games really speak to us is because neither of us are really that into sports to begin with. Like anyone, I can get around having a beer with my dad on a Sunday while we're watching a game of rugby, but I think that's more for the bonding and less for the actual game. I did play a couple of seasons of tennis when I was younger thanks to my mum's insistence, but who really has control over their own lives when they're like eight? Not me. <laughs> I quickly discovered that my interests lie elsewhere, namely in music and video games. We know we're probably in the minority here, sport is a huge part of Australian and Kiwi culture after all, but the truth is that some of us nerds just aren't that physically inclined, and that's okay. The whole attitude of these mainstream sports games is a little bit crap as well. It's essentially releasing the same game year after year with an updated roster. Can you imagine if Smash Ultimate DLCs were released as entirely new games? Smash Ultimate 2.0? There'd be riots. We know the Nintendo branded sports titles don't necessarily suffer from this same problem, but it definitely adds to the whole mehness of the genre as a whole. Like, good on these companies for making an absolute buttload of money, but maybe just calm down a bit. I'm actually surprised that your local game store even accepts them for trade-ins, seeing as though they're worth almost nothing just a few years later. Regardless of whether you like the FIFA or the NBA games or not, I think we can all agree that a new one every single year is a little bit overkill. Right? Surely that's anti-consumer. Hit the like button if you agree, but if you do like collecting these games year after year, then let us know why in the comments. Thankfully though, the Switch isn't really the leading console for the, shall we say, realistic sports titles. Sure, they're available, but they definitely sell better elsewhere. This leaves a little gap in the market that Nintendo has very wisely been filling since the 64 days and before. Now admittedly, we do own a few of these Nintendo sports titles, and they are not without their own unique set of problems. This is mostly Tom's doing though. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have played any of these. Being a gaming couple is definitely good for getting an exposure to a wide variety of games, but I do have to admit that once he wrote me into it, I did have fun for a few hours. I'm pretty sure the games Laura is referring to are Mario Golf and the recently released Nintendo Switch Sports. Why these two titles over anything else? Well, nostalgia, just like we said in the intro. I have one friend in particular I played a heap of golf sims with, and I was excited to try Super Rush out with him. And as for Switch Sports, well, I mean, I had a Wii. Need I say more? I wasn't lucky enough to have a Wii back in the day. My parents preferred consoles that didn't use the TV, so handhelds. Hey Mord! How do I get this game box thingy off the TV? I'm trying to watch the football! I did play Wii Sports at my friends' houses, but I never had a strong affinity for it, and I definitely never had a strong affinity for Mario Golf. Or any golf for that matter. What a boring game. So I was pleasantly surprised when I found myself having a jolly old time with both of these new Switch titles. Now Mario Golf Super Rush and Nintendo Switch Sports are both good for different reasons. Switch Sports has variety, and variety is most definitely the spice of life. Whereas golf has that Mario flair, you know? Like the speed golf and story modes, as well as the sport of golf being much more fleshed out than anything you'll find in Switch Sports. 
multiple courses and things like that. Unfortunately though, both of these games have a major issue and it seems like Mario Strikers has suffered the same fate. And that is a lack of content at launch. For one reason or another, Nintendo insists on drip feeding us content for their sports titles. We'll speculate on the why in a minute, but first let's go over the what. We'll focus on Nintendo Switch Sports here because for us that is by far the biggest culprit. Mario Golf Super Rush could have used a couple of extra courses, but that's about it. So the latest entry in the Wii Sports franchise is missing a whole sport. Now you might be saying, but Tom, the original had five and this one has six. Firstly, the original came with the console for free. And secondly, Nintendo specifically came out before launch and said that they will be adding golf sometime later this year. We met people on Twitch whose most anticipated game was golf. So they've purchased Switch Sports only to wait God knows how long to actually enjoy it till its full potential. And that there is our entire point. These games aren't living up to their full potential at launch. The physical edition even comes with a leg strap that is utilized in one extremely underwhelming mini game. Full support has been promised for soccer or football, but God only knows when that's actually going to happen. Like, surely this should have been there from the get-go. I can't see a huge number of people rushing out to put their leg strap on and dusting off their cartridge when this does finally happen. But would the game have been more fun and reviewed better if we'd had it originally? Almost certainly. The inclusion of soccer, golf and tennis in Switch Sports also makes us question the necessity of the Mario sports games. We know that the Mario versions are more fleshed out and more Mario-fied, but aren't you essentially still swinging a club or a racket? Now there are a few reasons why this issue seems so prevalent with these titles. The first and most obvious of these is that the games simply weren't finished. And I think this is the one that most people buy into as well. We're definitely for the cancellation of crunch culture and maybe Nintendo had some kind of schedule or something that they needed to stick to. But honestly, I'm just trying to think of a logical reason why they wouldn't just delay the games instead of bringing us half ass versions. Like maybe they had some kind of contractual obligations or they were trying to keep their shareholders happy. It just doesn't really make much sense to me. The other reason we can think of for all of this is that Nintendo knows sports games aren't all that interesting and are trying to keep people interested for longer. Like how shooters have online seasons where they change things up ever so slightly and people keep playing. They're looking for that long-term appeal. Maybe this is the real reason because it doesn't really make much sense and sometimes Nintendo doesn't really make much sense. Wouldn't you add content, not cut stuff in the first place and paste it back in later? Maybe they should hold their own seasons instead. A sports season, who would have thought? The best option, and I know this is gonna come as quite a shock, but it's to just give us a damn finished game. Delays are fine, as long as we get a good, full, polished experience at the end of it. Have you people really learnt nothing? We know that this is all getting a little bit negative, but we've still got one more thing to complain about. And that's Nintendo's timed demos that they've been doing for these games. We've missed all of these because unfortunately we don't do this full time and we have commitments to things like our jobs. We would have loved to at least given Strikers a go the other week, but we were busy for the like three hours that it was available for. Who knows? We might have even loved it. It might have even convinced us to buy it. There's obviously a reason Nintendo's doing this, probably something to do with online servers, but it just sucks for us personally. So basically, regardless of if we were using our own two feet or a controller, or if it's a hyper-realistic game, or the ball becomes a shell and you're versing an anthropomorphic ape named Donkey, we're just not huge fans of sports. Sure, these games can be fun, but are they worth the full 60 US dollars? Maybe for you, but not for us. And at the end of the day, are you really doing more than just kicking a ball over and over again? We're sorry this video wasn't our usual positive vibe, but these things need to be said, and we speak for the people who also don't really give a crap about sports and its video games. 
If you've made it this far, you might as well hit the subscribe button. The match is almost over after all. And especially let us know how you feel about sports games in the comments below. Nintendo or not, we would love to continue the discussion down there and we might even let you convince us. Make sure you check the description box for links to all of our other socials, including Twitch, where we have tried some of these sports games in the past, Twitter, Instagram, all that out of the garbage. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a lovely rest of your week and we'll see you next time for the next one. Bye. Okay, that's not that. What?